Welcome to the Orton Gillingham Podcast, a Brainspring production. Today, we'll speak with Brooke Steingold, a successful nurse with dyslexia and ADHD, about how she went from dropping out of high school to becoming a college graduate and inspiration to her daughter. Keep listening. Well, hello, everybody. I'm here with Kara. Hi, Kara. Hi. And we have um, a special guest with us. Brooke Steingold is here with us today. And Brooke is um, is a nurse. She just became a nurse and, and is, is, has been telling us before we even started recording all these amazing stories that I wish you all could have heard. But maybe, you, maybe they'll come out again. Um, so she's a nurse and she also has um, dyslexia and among other, some other things as well, which we'll talk about. Um, and so we're, we're here just to hear your story, Brooke. Welcome to our podcast. Thank you. Yeah, we're so excited to have you. Me too. Um, and, and I wish you could see Brooke because she's so vivacious and, <laughs> and happy and we're excited to talk to her. Um, so, so you are very successful. You are. You are. You've done amazing things. And, and so we want to know how you got here, how you got to this point. So um, thinking back um, when you were young, um, what kinds of struggles did you have as far as, or how did you, you know, how do you, how do, why do you think you got to where you are now? And, and we want to just kind of hit the, the, the high points of your, or low points of your, sure. of your life as you went through. Yeah. So. I, I've always struggled in school. I've always gotten in trouble. Um, it was always, I was lazy. Mm-hmm. I went to a parochial school, so they mm-hmm. didn't really have a lot of help there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we know she can do it. She's smart. Yeah. She just doesn't do it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I wasn't doing. Mm-hmm. And so it was always back at me. I mean, I remember being in third grade and it was my fault. And then I think now I'm like, I can't even imagine my children in third grade and them being responsible for their homework or yeah. their education. Right. So um, when you say you're lazy, what do you mean by that? Oh, that's what all like the the nuns, teachers, principal parents would say, you're lazy. You're lazy. Yeah. Why aren't you doing it? You're just not doing it. What was your reaction to that? I would believe them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I was little. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just kind of grew up with that, and this is just how it is. This is just who I am. I'm just, I guess I'm just lazy, Mm. you know? Um, We moved a lot when I was a kid, and then when we moved back, now my dad never told me I was lazy, Mm -hmm. but he would, like, be angry at me, and he's Mm -hmm. like, do better. I don't want you to be like me kind of thing, but it was like a very not sharing a lot of feelings at that time, right, you know, right. I had no idea. That's big, why. that's big stuff for a little kid. Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I just wrapped my head around it. Right. Like, maybe five years ago. Right. You know? Right. Right. So um, Brooke, would you yeah. say third grade was kind of the marker for you as you think about the past? Was that when you thought, okay, I, I was lazy. That was is struggling. the realization, yes. But I know I had problems prior to that because I remember having issues reading and my dad trying to work with me on reading. And I, it was just one of my struggles mm-hmm. in kindergarten. But I didn't know that it was a problem or anything then. But in third grade is definitely when I realized, like, the adults in my life were telling me that, you know, I should be doing more. Mm-hmm. Why am I not doing more? Mm-hmm. You need to get serious. Get, get your and, stuff right. together here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so how did this affect your self-confidence? Oh, my gosh. What self-confidence? Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. So I really just didn't have any. And I was a – my whole life, I was an only child and with divorced parents, so I was back and forth mm-hmm. living in two different states. And I was a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to walk on eggshells and make sure my mom was happy and her mm-hmm. feelings were taken care of. And then my dad – was okay because I didn't want to hurt his feelings and his mm-hmm. wife's feelings. So I just kind of learned how to please everyone around me or make them smile or laugh mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. I learned that quick in life, like what I was good at uh, doing. So it would take attention away from the things that I was not good at. Right. That makes sense. Right, 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 right. Also, yeah. please let me know if I'm babbling. No, you're okay. not. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. No. But were you able to, as as you were kind of going through school as as a little girl, you get labeled. And then as you get older, especially being um, a child with parents that are divorced, were you sort of just kind of covering it up, your grades and sure. what your teachers were saying and how you felt? Yes. And so 
did it become eventually where your parents didn't ask anymore because they thought, okay, she's fine. They didn't ask until, like, the report card would come out, and then I'd get in big trouble. Okay. Like, major trouble. So, like, Mm. two or three times a year uh, because it was easy to not know what was going on, especially back then. Mm -hmm. Again, parochial school till eighth grade, and then I went to a public school, and then that's kind of when things changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of. So did you – you probably didn't have then anybody – addressing your reading issues no like pulling you out of class to help Mm -hmm. you or nothing like that not at all I was a problem right to the teachers to the classroom to the kids I was the problem right 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 did you ever say I'm struggling and I'm I'm having a hard time no those were very like feelings that I just didn't even know how to I was you know emotionally immature Mm -hmm. as I should be at that age Mm -hmm. no I didn't know. I really just thought that this was who I was. So you probably couldn't put your finger on the fact that you didn't know how to read. Yeah. Like, like. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And you couldn't even say, but I don't, how do you, I don't know how to read these words. And if I, know? if I would read the words, I would say the words, but they would have zero meaning to me. Right. Okay. You know? Right, 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 right. So you talked a little bit about compensating for, for oh, this. Oh, yeah. And so you were, you were the pleaser. Oh, yeah. You were the funny try to be funny Mm -hmm. or probably very friendly to everybody. Yeah, friendly and and clean for everyone. Like my parents or my grandparents, I would just clean whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. I would take care of it. That's a common thing that we've been hearing. We talk to a lot of people who Mm -hmm. have dyslexia and almost all of them say the same thing. That they, I just wanted to be the pleaser. I wanted to, I wanted to be the helper. I wanted to, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and it's just because they knew they could do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And did you also have this feeling where you just wanted to be light? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. By my own parents, even. Yeah. You know, I just felt like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. I'm not bad, or am I bad? You know, kind right. of thing. It's so yeah. sad to think about it that. It is sad. Isn't it? Yeah. Like, they don't yeah. understand. I mean, I, I just being so young and not feeling like feeling like something's wrong. Definitely. But yeah. also like that's your normal. So you don't really have any other yeah. thing to compare it to. Yeah. At, at what point did you learn that, that find out that you had a learning disability? Um, I found out that I had a learning disability in high school, actually. Okay. Um, I had a 0.4 GPA. Mm. <laughs> this is how I actually met my husband <laughs> because he also was... <laughs> had learning disabilities. And it, then um, mm-hmm. at that point in time, I went to a, I think a psychologist. Mm-hmm. They gave me, um, I don't even remember what it was. It was ADHD medication. Okay. I became a completely different person. Very, um, I was just very still. You lost your personality. I lost my personality, lost my like artistic mm. abilities, I guess. And um, we were put in little classrooms mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. and they were called special education classrooms mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was small, and we had like freedom to. We didn't do anything in these classrooms. Mm. We sat around and talked. Mm. I mean, really. So, so you didn't feel like they taught you how to read? No, I didn't. No. Yeah. So yeah. that that's one of my questions too. So you get put on this medicine, which I think, you know, there was a time when a lot of kids did get put on medicine. And then I think there was a thought that all of a sudden it was going to help you be be a better reading, Mm -hmm. better reader. Mm. Yeah. But it didn't. Weirdly, not so much with reading, but like my grades did improve because I was so focused. It worked for me, but I hated it because I didn't understand it. Um, It was like a Band-Aid. And I was, again, not doing it for me. I was doing it for my parents, right. and I'm like, why? Right. It was mm-hmm. probably helping you focus and yeah. be more organized maybe and, yeah. and know that you had homework or whatever, but 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 it wasn't really fixing the root problem, mm-hmm. which was dyslexia, yeah. most likely, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and it took away your personality. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I don't remember how old I was, but I remember driving to school, and my mom and I were fighting and I rolled on the window and I threw my prescription out the window and I was done. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my daughter, um, started medication when she was probably in, I don't know, seventh or eighth grade. And she's, she's very much, her personality is very outgoing and fun. 
And her friends would say, don't take your medication today. You're no fun when you take your medication. So she would be like, I'm not taking my medication today. I'm like, yes, you are. Yeah. You're taking it. But it, w- she felt the same way. Like, yeah. just didn't feel like herself. No, mm-hmm. you know? not at all. And, and, you know, that could be partly because maybe it was, maybe the prescription needed to be tweaked or something. But, but that's a very, also a very common, yeah. uh, common thing that, you know, the teachers want you to take it. Because you're mm-hmm. a lot easier in the classroom. But yeah. your friends and you... Mm-hmm. It's it's like who am I? Yep. Yeah. Um, so so let's fast forward to to um, high school. Yeah. Um, so you just, you're put in these med- these um these you're on the meds you're you're in special ed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what happened in tenth grade? So I met this group of friends that actually kind of changed things for me. Um, they all were really intelligent and in my opinion, Mm -hmm. they would sit around and go to restaurants and we would smoke cigarettes and drink coffee and talk about philosophy. And I'm like, what are they talking about? I need to keep up with this. Uh So I would write down books and stuff they're reading or like lyrics and music. And I'm like, wow, they have different meaning. I get, I can understand this. So I would try to keep up with them, especially with books. I remember one of my friends in high school bought me the um, art, wait, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Sure, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if I told you that before, that that was like the first full book I got to read uh-huh. fully, but it took me like years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd have to restart it. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? uh-huh. And I kept doing it. Um, I don't think I fully understood it until one day I was like an adult and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. I get it. Even yeah. though it's been like 20 years, I get it now. Um, but I think that they really showed me that I wasn't lazy. I wasn't Mm -hmm. dumb. Mm -hmm. Why am I understanding some of the things that they're talking about? There's more to life than what I've known. Right. And I think that was the beginning for me to see like there is something else Mm -hmm. bigger. Did you try and find other ways? Like, did you ever think about reading a book on, you know, on tape or, um, no. Not back then. No. no. I mean, when I was bored as a kid, I used to go through the dictionary and, like, write words down mm. over and over again. And, mm. I mean, I was I was just weird. I wanted to learn, but I didn't know how to learn. Right, right. right. You know? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Did you kind of find a little workaround mm. in any aspect of school? No, I dropped out of high school because okay. I just couldn't mm-hmm. do it. And what grade did you drop out? I think it was like the beginning of 11th grade. Okay. E- either the beginning of 11th grade or the end of 10th grade. And then I worked. Okay. Two jobs. So I, I want to just have you talk about your creativity. Yeah. So did you feel like that was, you were able to be creative in these years? Like so, were, was there an outlet for you? Yes. I, I actually, because I went to a parochial school, I used to write a lot. Mm-hmm. I still do write a lot and I would have journals Mm -hmm. and um I remember one of the nuns found my journal and gave it to my parents and said that it was so dark (gasps) and I needed help but like I have that same journal and my parents like freaked out and Mm -hmm. you know I was on like I don't even know I wasn't on like suicide watch but they were like really concerned nervous yeah yeah like why is this seventh grader talking like this or having these thoughts and I read it and I'm like I laugh at it now I'm like it's hilarious it's embarrassing but also like (laughs) that was my only outlet writing Mm -hmm. and they didn't understand that Mm -hmm. so I felt like it was taken from me a little bit Mm. but I still continued to do it just in secret or hit it for a long time it was a shame Thing. So you don't have to tell us everything, but did you have thoughts of like were you expressing that you wanted to leave school or no? Uh, no, was it darker mm. that you? Just- it was more like um, I had like more of like a f this kind of attitude. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I've always like if my anybody is like this is a brown table, and I'd be like mm, I don't know. Kind of got a yellow hue to it. Yeah. I'll argue with you all day about it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Sort yeah. of that rebel that side. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. much so. Okay. I love rules when they make sense. And I've mm-hmm. discovered that still as an adult. Like rules, yes, I love rules. Mm-hmm. It's order. It's structure. I need mm-hmm. it. But if it doesn't make sense, they just don't apply. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. 
So, can you can you take us through? Sorry, can you take us through like what led you to want to drop out of school? Like I like what was your mindset that you thought I am done with this? I can't do it anymore. I wasn't doing good. I wasn't getting good grades. Um, college was never even talked about with me. Didn't even think it was something that I could do. And my friends were talking about it with their parents. My parents and I didn't talk about it. So I was like, this just isn't for me. I'm going to be like them, which was fine for me, Mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't know any different. Um, I left because I wasn't doing well in school. I hated it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Did you have a plan? Like, I'm going to drop out of school. Now what am I going to do? No, I dropped out of school, got a job, and then got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that was it. Of mm-hmm. course, I didn't have a plan. No. no, no. I barely have plans now. <laughs> I, I mean, back then, definitely no direction whatsoever. So None. your creativity came. So you're very, you like words. I do. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of a cool thing. I mean, you had trouble deciphering words. Yeah. But you love words. Yeah. So. And I will say them wrong mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. still. And then I'll like re-say them over and over again. And I love technology because now I can just Google it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how do I say this word? Yeah. Oh, I've been saying it wrong my whole entire life. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so interesting. Um, so so you dropped out of school and you 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 had a baby. Yeah. And um so and you were working. Yeah, a lot. So what <clears throat> what led you? I mean, I, I jotted down, at, at some point, did you ever feel like the odds were just totally stacked against you? Um, my entire life. Yeah. yeah. And so how does one proceed when yeah. you feel like, I, there's, I, I'm doomed, I, there's nothing I can do? How, what made you pull up your bootstraps and say, I'm going to go to college? Or I'm going to go to nursing school? Still like, never thought I would go to college. I mean, that my oldest is about to be 25, so... Mm-hmm. I never even, my, when I found out I was pregnant with her and I became a mom, I just wanted her to have more than I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. She saved my life. Mm -hmm. Didn't think I would get married. Didn't Mm -hmm. think I would be doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Never. College, never. Mm -hmm. Just going to work. I'm going to wait tables. I'm going to do what my mom did, Mm -hmm. which was fine. Mm -hmm. It's great. It worked for her. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. Exactly. Right? Yes. But I never thought it was in the cards for me Mm -hmm. because it just wasn't. Right. Um, And then, and then, you know, Sean and I reconnected Mm -hmm. and he's got a very different life. He has learning disabilities, Mm -hmm. but he also has two supportive parents, Mm -hmm. one who went through college, Mm -hmm. you know, just a very different Mm -hmm. life. Um, He's an artist, Mm -hmm. so he does think outside the box. Mm -hmm. And when I was pregnant with our last one, I was just miserable because I was going job to job sales. Mm. You know, I remember the moment I wanted to become a nurse, but I was like, mm, that's just not in my cards. Mm-hmm. But he always knew. And he said, why don't you just try to go back to school part time? Why mm-hmm. don't you just try it? See. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll try it. Mm-hmm. And I went to OCC mm-hmm. and it was terrible. Like I couldn't even write a paper. Mm-hmm. It was run on sentences. I write the way my mind mm-hmm. thinks, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Stream I mean, of not crazy, but it's yeah. just like yeah. nonstop and right, right. thoughts from everywhere. And that's how I wrote. And yeah. I was like, I don't know. Yeah how to manage this, and I would cry. Mm. I would cry because I didn't even know how to use a computer at Mm. that time because it was like I skipped. Mm -hmm. I was just like on fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And then I missed this whole like era of technology. Yeah. And so he knows it, so he's like, it's okay, you're going to get better. Mm -hmm. Didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. But I did. I got who helped you? Who helped you finish writing those papers? So he would actually proofread them for me. Okay. And he would just be like, this is a run-on sentence. And he's like, I don't want to pick you apart, but like, do you see what you could write instead? Mm-hmm. Like, he was so patient and yeah, that's great awesome. with me. And then I felt safe with him mm-hmm. also. So it wasn't like I felt stupid or uh, lazy mm-hmm. like I would if it was somebody else at that time. And are you understanding, though, are you putting into perspective that you have a learning disability at this point? At that point, I knew I was ADHD, but no. Okay, so okay. you're still not. You're still, still even have at this no idea. Point, you're yeah. like, what's wrong? No clue. 
Yeah. And your husband doesn't, is, is he kind of saying, you know, something? No. You might want to get tested or no. no. He has no, like, okay. no, just this is who I am. This right. is who we married and this is, you right. know, what I am. But right. you said he had a learning disability. He does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he does have a learning yeah. disability? Yep. Okay. Very, very much so. <laughs> he's, I know Sean and he's so creative and he can write. Yeah, he's a really good writer. He's got a great brain. And that's the whole reason why we're ha- we talk to people on this podcast is yeah. that, you know what, those labels, you know, when you think of learning disability, mm-hmm. I would never look at you and say you have a learning disability or Sean or yeah. any, any of the other guests that we've had because they have so many other qualities, yeah. you know. But but it's the scary part is when you don't realize you have one and, you're, and then you're going through these things these problems like what's wrong with me there's yeah. something wrong with me and there's nothing wrong with you right it's an undiagnosed learning disability yeah and as soon as it's diagnosed everything starts to make sense right so can you can you think of that point where it started to click to you for mm-hmm. you like oh my gosh you know I, I i can learn and i i just have this i just have dyslexia yeah I, I was, um, in, uh, one of my last classes at the community college before I was going to apply to my U of M and I had a teacher, a professor from, um, I don't even remember where he was from. English was his second language. Mm -hmm. I had such a hard time understanding him. Mm. Um, and he's like, I don't understand. You understand all the material when we're in person because mm-hmm. I ask a lot of questions. I'm like, wait, what did you just say? Did you say this or did you say this? Mm-hmm. But when I'm taking the exams and stuff, the way he would write it didn't make sense in my brain. Mm-hmm. At the same time, my youngest is starting school and I'm like, wow, she, there's things that she's doing that I used to do as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, frustrations, temper tantrums, writing mm-hmm backwards the the phonetic sounds of mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. it was just very much familiar to me mm-hmm. and still no idea I'm like there's something yeah. there is something but I don't want her to feel yeah. the way I ever felt because she is brilliant mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's just spirited and mm-hmm. different and she thinks differently mm-hmm. so that's when I started and I started talking about it more and more just to anybody who would listen to me and my dad was like, you know, I have dyslexia. And I'm like, no, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing that with me now. (laughs) Right. Uh, But, you know, tell me, like, and we have so many things in common. I don't know if this is dyslexia or not, but, like, we just discovered maybe four or five years ago that, like, when we're walking on stairs, we both count them. And we Mm, will, like, just send each other a text. We're like, 67 stairs and we both like it's just like something he's done his whole life I've always done it my whole life Mm -hmm. but I've always kept it to myself Mm -hmm. and he has too because he felt like a weirdo because he also was ridiculed as a child especially in the 50s oh gosh like it was just a very different right very different so and he was always ashamed and he would say things like I could never do what you're doing and I'm like but you could because you're so he's so smart Mm -hmm. he's just smart with his in a a different way. Exactly. It's the shame. Yeah. That's it. You know, it makes people just de- not talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, it, ugh. Yeah. Would, um, was math your subject? Did you have a particular subject that you, you liked? No. No. Art. Okay. I loved art. Mm-hmm. Music. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you find out, um, talking to your family, mm-hmm. that there are other struggles too. Yeah. Who is the first person that you go to to actually talk about it? Do you find a psychologist? Yeah. Okay. And my and my um, my primary care physician mm. um, because I was talking about my daughter mm-hmm. and I'm talking about these things and I was like, can I ask? Like, I have this too going on. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to make this about me, but mm-hmm. I'm in school. I'm struggling. Like, yeah. is this something that can be correlated? And that's when everything started coming out. And at that time, I was really struggling in school, like really Mm -hmm. struggling, but getting by Mm -hmm. and doing well. It just, you know, I was very specific. I needed on this color of paper, I need 17 different highlighters and every single color marker 
in a specific ink mm -hmm. so I can write my notes so I could read them and, and know how to separate them mm -hmm. so I could study them. Mm -hmm. So it was taking me extra, extra long time that I mm -hmm. only studied she and wrote notes. She was creating her own multi-sensory right. is what yeah. she was So doing. that was your yeah. work around. You did right. figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I did. Um, and just for the listeners, uh, how did, so how did you find your psychologist? Did you just? Through my school. Okay. Through so, U of M. Yeah. Yes. Like they, okay. I didn't know it was free. All right. And then my, one of my best friends who is a psychologist was like, you know, you, you can get free care there while you're there a student. So I started going and that's when I found out. However, I did not know that I could get accommodations Ah. They didn't, like, tell me that. Mm -hmm. And then I was in my first semester of school, nursing school, in the program, and my professor overheard me talking, and she, like, I was in another professor's office, and she kind of wheeled her chair, and she goes, hey, you you have learning disabilities, and mm -hmm. I, I think you should look into this. I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you my grades raised 25 points just being alone, being able to read out loud, having extra time, mm -hmm. it was insane. Yeah. And and also learning, like, how to advocate for my little one because yeah, right. it took us – she now finally has a 504, I think yep. it's called. Yes. Mm -hmm. It took forever. Yes. And she finally has one. Yeah. I'm talking, like, three and a half years it took us because I – And and that is a really important – what you just said is super important because yeah. you can't rely on the schools to to do these kinds of things. I'm it's, sorry, Esther. It's not, not a 504. It's a IEP. 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 I was wondering. IEP. If okay. I have okay. a 504. She has an IEP. Did, and she has an IEP. Okay. That's what it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but oftentimes it's the parents who are saying pushing, 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 pushing. Yeah, you have to ask. Yeah. You have to ask or yeah. and sometimes it just slips through the cracks. Oh my gosh. But it, you know, but it is something that we don't know of, like as a parent, yeah. the school's not talking about IEPs. No. It's everybody seems to find out yep. in a roundabout way. Yeah. And then you say, oh, well, maybe, I, maybe my child needs to get tested. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, like once you apply for it, Back when my daughter had it, they the school had 30 days yes. to test yep. and then report back and decide which way they wanted to go. It is very, it, it's a lot. Or like they yeah. notice there's the issues in these areas, but she's just a yes. half a point over where they mm -hmm. she doesn't quite qualify, yes. and mm -hmm. it's so and it can come down to like you said that wire, yep that 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 bar, yeah, which they keep lowering. Yes, they <laughs> over. Right. Yes, they keep lowering so that kids are are not accommodated. Yeah, and I think, and I might be wrong about this. You guys probably know. I I, I believe that it has to come from a parent. If it comes, if the request comes from a parent, they're obligated that thirty days. They're obligated. Yeah. So it's not going to happen unless the parent comes forward right. and says, "Hey, mm -hmm. I want my child tested for this," and they have to by law. Do it in 30 yep. days. Now, if yeah. the teacher does, if a teacher says that, I don't believe that that's the same. Mm -mm. I think it comes, has to come the from the teacher, teachers. Yeah. were in agreement with us yeah. in second grade. When I tell you, they would test her and do a full battery at her school mm -hmm. and be like, no, she's just, it's just focus and attention. Mm -hmm. And her dad and I are like, no, it's more. And I was distraught about it because I know the mm -hmm. cycle. I know that feeling mm -hmm. of being a little girl who is mm -hmm. cute and funny and sweet because she does compensate just like I did, mm -hmm. and she's going to turn into the problem like yeah. I did mm -hmm. and then get ignored or get kind of bullied yeah. by it. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, having gone through this yourself and now you're seeing it in your child, do you feel an obligation to the world yes. almost? Like this is your job mm -hmm. to, to advocate. I mean yeah. – because some kids have nobody that advocates That's for right. them. Or adults. Or I, adults. I want to tell you, exactly. like, I said it to mm -hmm. a coworker without, like, saying too much about who it is, but a coworker of mine, I, I asked if she has ever been diagnosed with dyslexia because I saw a lot of similarities with mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. And she told me that she doesn't like to tell people about it because, you know, people look down on her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
I disagree. I'm also, you know, like 15 years older than her. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think you need to tell people about it because you're really good at your job. Absolutely. You hold the clout here. And people need to know that it's actually very normal. And there's more of us out there than than one, we even realize. One in five. Yes. Well, I didn't even know that. One so that's, in five. But I do know that there's like yeah. some sort of magnet in our brains that yeah. we're just like attracted to each other. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know right, what it right. is, but we it's, find each other, It's I feel more like. common than anybody ever, ever knew. Yeah. And so think about how many people you work with. Yeah. And then say one in five has dyslexia. Yeah. And then I would say like... And probably more in your More in my situation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very, it's so common. Yeah. And, and yet there's still that stigma of, mm -hmm. I'm not telling anybody. Yeah. I'm not going to tell anybody. But that, and that's the re whole reason why we, we are talking about this is because... Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so, it's such a waste. You right. You know, it, 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 and you can do something about it. Yeah. You can be successful. You know, there are ways to, to work around it. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. So so just, I mean, every time somebody realizes this, they become an advocate for someone else. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what's going to make changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so that's amazing. So think of, and I, I want you to talk about your nursing job. I mean, yeah. so how do you accommodate at work? I mean, for, in your job, how do you... Um, how do you manage to do your job as a nurse um, with with it's ADHD as well as yeah, yeah. dyslexia? Yeah. So just talk about that. I mean, is there anything different that you feel like you have to do in order to stay on? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have to, especially like with medicines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. There's um, words. They're big words. Mm -hmm. And some of them are very similar and they mm -hmm. sound very similar. Mm -hmm. So I am like always checking myself yes. quadruple times because I do not, that's like something I don't want to mess up ever. Right, right. Um, also, weirdly, um, left and right. Oh, yeah. I have to know it like so fast mm -hmm. and I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. So I find myself writing it on my hands a lot, awesome. which helps me because I know like if I do this, I can see this is yeah. clearly an L. Yes. But I have to stop and do this. You have to be conscious and of I'm it. And I'm like, L, yeah. L, L goes that way, not that way, in my head. And it takes me a whole like five and a half seconds. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if I just write it down on my glove or on my hand, mm -hmm. then it, it's, I don't have to think about it. Yes. What about time? I mean, obviously oh, that's my time so important, important for the worst. Okay. I have. But like, even telling time, do you have to Oh, have telling time? I have. An oh, analog? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do use military time, though, just because, like, I had to get – I made myself get used to it because I work midnight, so mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. I needed to, and I have, like, a little way of doing it. It's always whatever the number is, minus two, and that's what time it is. I don't know. See, you, you figured out all of these workarounds. Yeah. yeah. Like sure. To yeah. me, there has to be a, a quick trick to everything. Yes. There has to be. Yes. Right. And I, that's shortcut. my goal. Like, I yeah. need to know what that is. I'm going to figure – it's, like, my goal. I'm mm -hmm. figuring out what it is because – Things can be easier. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so hard. Right, right. And <laughs> yeah. it's okay to use these little tools. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay yeah. to do that. Um, so did you ever, when you when you thought about the nursing profession, did you ever feel like, oh, maybe that's not the best thing for me to do because of your, you know, the way you, you have to to learn or, the, or your dif yeah. difficulty with reading? I mean, what made you say... I just am, I'm fascinated. I feel like deep down inside you have a very, you're very, you're very confident. Uh, thanks. And, <laughs> and, and it was always hidden down there, your confidence, but now it's actually coming out. It is it's, now because I'm allowing it to, because yes. even like a few weeks ago, my coworkers would be like, you are lacking confidence in yourself. You uh, deserve to be here. You are mm -hmm. a good nurse. Like mm -hmm. you uh, are going to learn something new every day. You know, mm -hmm. we all make mistakes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But I I will tell you, nursing school is really hard. Yeah. But it's mostly with your hands. I learn with my hands. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't read a single book in nursing school. Mm -hmm. I listened to everything. Yeah. Or I mm -hmm. found a shortcut how to do it. And yeah. nowadays with like YouTube, 20-second videos, yeah. Five minute videos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. that, that saved me. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like there's that deep down, I know I can do this kind of attitude and, and it, it comes out like I'm thinking about, you know, other people that we've interviewed before 
And they just wouldn't accept that yeah. they, I, I'm not, I can't do this. They wouldn't accept it. They knew, even though they were self, you know, self conscious about mm-hmm. it, they just knew, I'm worth, I can do this. I, they had that in there. It's, and it's a, not giving it's up. It's a drive. It's a drive. Right? It's, I, yeah. it's a drive. It's that rebel thing for me. Yes. Like people, so many people were so like, she, no, she's lazy. Yeah. She can't do this. And I, w- I wanted to like be, give everybody a middle finger and I not only can I do it not only am I doing it but like I want you to watch me do it and I want you to watch me do it well Mm -hmm. and you know I can and and does that grow the confidence Mm. is knowing that 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 you're getting that that you've succeeded (laughs) yes and no yes I was so proud of myself and then once I started working in the field and I was like wow I don't know anything and then it kind of like okay Went back and then I was like, should I even be here? Who mm. said I was qualified to do these things? <laughs> right. Like, honestly, like this mm-hmm. is not okay. Mm-hmm. So that you have to really get over that. Yep. Um, and I'm still not over it, but no kidding. There's a, a one of the charge nurses. She's amazing. She actually wrote affirmations for me oh, and nice. sent them to me and then gave them to me on a piece of paper. And it was so silly and like ridiculous. And she would go, are you doing, you're not doing your affirmations, are you? And uh-huh. I'm like, yes, I am. She's like, mm, no, you're not. <laughs> well, I started doing them yeah. every day before work, just in my like in my head to myself, and then before bed. And I swear, it has made a difference. And it's only like four different lines. I I love that you're yeah. saying that because that's a special person. Yes, to point that out. Yes, because I think um, so many people that go through the struggles and the dyslexia, and then have a boss yeah. that you know, maybe kind of, kind of picks and, you know, questions what they're doing, why they did it. And, and then, then you have that feeling, that small feeling. Yeah. So I love that you have somebody in your life that said, do these affirmations yeah. because you're, you're deserving somebody of who that. was a stranger, really, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. that I grew, like, when I see her, I'm like, I give her a hug every time. Yes. I don't even care if it's mm-hmm. weird. I'm like, I'm yeah. hugging you. I think you're an amazing human. And that's where um, we want to spread the awareness of dyslexia yeah. to everybody yeah. because whether you have it or don't have it, you should have compassion mm-hmm. yeah. and be able to, you know, lift somebody up. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, um, it's so great to hear your yeah. story. I think almost you. everybody we talk to has somebody, they can point to a person or more yeah. Yeah. who says, if it wasn't for mm-hmm. that person, yeah. I would not be where I am. If That's it wasn't true. for that, yeah. I mean, there are these people are important. Yes, in your life. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and now you have to be that person. Yeah. And and your daughter will be that person. Yes. You know, and 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 awareness is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you have to have this awareness. Yeah. Um, yes. Because it, it's a, it, it only takes a person. It really to change does. A, whole, a person's entire yeah, that's right. trajectory. And one and, person can do that. And yep. the freedom so. to talk about it. And yes. that's why we're so thankful yes. that you're here. Mm-hmm. Because so many people, they do want to brush it under the rug. They don't want to talk about it. Yeah. They, they know, and for the people that may not know that they have it, mm-hmm. they, they're, it's, it's a little embarrassing. Yeah. So it's good to put it out there just I like agree. you did. Yeah. And just say, hey, even the word can kind of intimidate people. Mm-hmm. So it's good to just say, mm-hmm. hey, let's talk about dyslexia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important for people who have dreams or goals and this is what's holding them back to know that there are people. Mm-hmm. That's why I like to share it. Like, mm-hmm. yes, y- you can do this because I did this and it's going to be hard, mm-hmm. but there are ways to do it and mm-hmm. I can help you. I want to help mm-hmm. everyone. And yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. But some people are, they're not ready for the, those conversations yet. I, know. I right. mean, and that's okay. Right. I'll be there when they're ready. Right. right. You know, I always tell them, like, if you ever want help or ever need to talk about it, I have yes. tons of notes and strategies mm-hmm. that work for me. They may work for you. Mm-hmm. And well, that was what we were, I was thinking we would, we could end on is what kind of yeah. advice would you give parents yeah. or people who, parents with kids who have dyslexia or, yeah. Or kids with dyslexia, or coworkers, anybody. What What is your advice for so them? So you do not fit a mold. Mm. You're not supposed to fit a mold. You're definitely special. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just help your kids, help them, show them what they're good at. And then like really focus on what they're good at because if no matter what it is, then they'll become good at everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just have patience and yeah, give them confidence yes. because confidence they're special. Such, and yes. what what is that light that shines in them? And and bring that out and keep it burning for them mm. because that's the problem with a lot of adults. Their 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 bright light has been shut off, right. and right. it's sad because you have to find it yourself, and most people won't find it. So. Yeah. Just yeah. keep that light burning in those kids and keep that confidence going. And then if anybody, an adult who has a little bit of an inkling of wanting to better themselves or go back to school, do it. Mm. Who cares mm -hmm. if you fail? Get up and try again. Who there's cares? there's people there that are going to help you. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask for help. That's and, right. Yes. Yeah. And there's that, that theme, Esther, of ask for help. That's right. Because, and that seems to kind of be a common thing mm -hmm. that, that, that is when true. we talk yeah. to somebody is that you have to say it. You have yeah. to go ask for it, mm -hmm. verbalize it. That is so true. Somebody yeah. will will pick you up and say, come, like you said, come with me. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. People don't know unless you ask. Right. You have to ask. Definitely. Right. So um, maybe another thing we can end on is how is this your superpower? Mm. Oh, I think this is my superpower because I get to share with people who want to learn and they can see that little light in themselves again. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I can share that with them mm -hmm. to show them, like, I really love building confidence in other people, mm -hmm. especially adults and little kids, mm -hmm. and talking to them like they're human beings mm -hmm. because we're all super special. We're all good at things. We just sometimes don't get the chance to show what we're good at. Right. Even as adults. Right, right. So I think that's like my superpower, just helping nurture and showing people what they're good at. I love that. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah. And you're doing it today. Yay. Thank yeah. you. This was so fun. Thank, Thank you, you so for, much. And thanks for coming on and talking yeah. about it. Cause I didn't not, even cry, which is like well, a <laughs> really I know. big deal for me. It almost made me cry. But, <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. It was Thank you. such a pleasure. And, and this is going to help a lot of people. I hope so. so. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for listening to the Orton Gillingham Podcast, a Brainspring production. For additional content, please subscribe to our newsletter, visit our website at brainspring.com, or follow us on social media. To submit questions or comments, please email us at podcast at brainspring.com. Your feedback is always welcome.